Hey guys, I'm Ned, CEO of Steemit, and today I want to talk to you about a couple things that have been coming up in my conversations with entrepreneurs who are considering doing a smart media token, an SMT, on Steam. And two of these recurring issues, one has to do with centralized and decentralized distributions and the importance of decentralized distributions and what that means for all the people participating in a token economy. And also uh, the impact of smart media tokens on copyright management and distributing revenue share amongst all the copyright holders of a potential piece of content. So the first issue in decentralized versus centralized distributions, I want to say that um, I want to establish some definitions. Steam is operating with decentralized distributions. There's this element of proof of brain out there where people are voting on content and creating content and rewards are distributed to the people doing those actions in a decentralized way. And there's a power to that because the community that rallies around the token Steam can depend on those things happening, those distributions happening mathematically. There's no single organization who could ever stop those distributions from happening. That's powerful. It gives integrity to the token. Now, on the other hand, there are several projects out there in the blockchain space that are claiming to do some sort of social media uh, to cryptocurrency blockchain sort of distributions, but it's all centralized and there's actually some pretty large issues with that. One is if you have a single company behind a token saying we're going to incentivize certain behaviors by distributing this token for certain things like contributing content or something like that, if that single company decides that they want to change the rules on any given day, they can. If they want to decide that you aren't eligible for rewards, for certain actions on any given day, they can. That's a problem. And so there's no integrity to rally around with the token. It's, it's hard to build a currency that, that has uh, a meaningful set of rules with centralized distribution. So in my estimate, these are a problem. Now, that's not to say there aren't great entrepreneurs working on this project. I just don't think that they have really tuned into this issue, not because they don't see the issue between centralized and decentralized distributions. Actually, they tell me they do, but they usually don't tune into the issue because they don't have the technology to support decentralized distributions. So for the first time, smart media tokens make decentralized distributions easy and possible. You know, where we're seeing, you know, tokens out there like Kick and SNP and, you know, in some ways even BAT, you know, organizations that are rallying around a token to distribute it themselves, you know, I think we'll pivot and start to see more decentralized token distributions out there and it'll be a far more compelling proposition to the public and far safer as well. Because the issue with, uh, you know, centralized distributions is if, a, if an organization is holding a ton of tokens and they're obligated to distribute them, well, what happens if they were to get hacked? What happens if the CEO of that company were to go rogue? You know, then the whole economic uh, equation there is completely thrown out of the window. So we need to move away from that. Another issue with centralized distributions is how they may be perceived in the eyes of some regulatory authorities around the world, including a body of regulation in the United States called FinCEN. FinCEN is concerned with the issuance of currency and the administration of currency. Any organization that is operating some sort of token system and distributing tokens for the first time on their behalf and bringing them into existence could be potentially perceived as a money transmitter and would need to register as an MSB in the United States. Now, this isn't a problem necessarily, and I'm not a lawyer, so make sure you go get your own legal advice, but this isn't necessarily a problem for an organization that is seeing their rewards distributed in a decentralized manner. So this is another reason that decentralized distributions are super, super important because they allow the public to rely on a set of, of mathematical algorithms rather than on individuals who can potentially corrupt or bankrupt a system that other people were depending on. Now there's a couple other uh, more nuanced aspects of decentralized distributions that I want to get into. One of them is the idea that there can eventually be identity as a consensus aspect in rewards algorithms. Essentially, if, if you took Steam's model today, a proof of brain, which is like, you know, there's no identity requirements at all to, sh to show up and create content and get rewarded for it. But if somehow there were uh, an identity system that was uncorruptible, then you could have the same sort of algorithms but applied to people in a way where one person has one vote or every single person who has a verified identity has, let's say, 20 votes per day. Now they're all competing 
And let's also assume they all have equal stake weight behind each of those votes. Now they're all competing from the same starting point every single day. They have the same advantages and disadvantages as everyone else. This would create a more democratic means of distributing tokens in a decentralized way, as long as the identity provider system was decentralized. So the way that this will happen is through identity oracles. Um, and I actually wrote about this a little bit in the Smart Media Tokens white paper, but the concept is basically if you had identity oracles in a system that looks analogous to something like delegated proof of stake, then you could have each of these identity witnesses funneling in account data saying this, is a, this account is a single person, this account is a single person, this account is a single person, they don't have any other accounts. If you're getting many organizations, many of these identity witnesses to do that, then you can start to have a reliability of data, they're getting paid to provide that data, and then you can use that data as a part of the rewards consensus in some smart media token. It would change the game, it would change the way that we see wisdom of the crowd uh, become a real part of curation in these systems. So in the future that's going to be a very important thing and it will be part of the second phase of development in smart media tokens. Now there's other things, other types of information that can be funneled into these systems too through a similar structure of sort of uh, witnesses funneling in data. Now I'm not saying they'll be the same set of witnesses that we're seeing in Steam today that produce blocks. I'm saying that they'll probably be a separate committee elected probably by the smart media token holders. And um, once that exists, they can funnel in all sorts of data. So if we take, for instance, a project that I've been learning about called Sports Podium. This is a project that I've learned, and I could still be incorrect about a little bit of this, but what, what I've learned about it is that they basically want to make a part of the rewards algorithm, some sort of consensus about uh, sports activities. So you could say if someone has gone and swum 50,000 laps, well then they're eligible for 100 tokens. And every time someone swims 50,000 laps, they get those tokens. But the challenge is how do you get the information, uh, the verification of of whether or not someone swam those laps into the blockchain and then into the token rewards algorithms? Well, the answer is in this committee of sports action witnesses sending in verification that certain things happen. Now, you'd probably have to couple that with some identity witnesses as well who are funneling in account data uh, to prevent other sorts of attacks. But once that information is being funneled into the blockchain, then it can be used in the rewards consensus of an SMT and can completely change the game and start to incentivize completely new behaviors that we haven't even begun to touch with Steam alone. So smart media tokens in this second phase where we have these additional information oracles funneling in more data into Steam is going to change the game in new way after new way after new way. So I'm very excited to see what we can do there. I'm very excited to see the democratization of decentralized distributions and to see more decentralized distributions overall because these are the types of algorithms in cryptocurrency that hold true to the vision where there's not central authorities behind these projects controlling how they operate and how their algorithms work. We need to, as a collective, move towards decentralized systems in these blockchains and move away from centralized algorithms for distributions. And I tell that to everyone who calls me and, and talks to me about the SMT that they want to run. And you know, I think I've seen eyes go wide with some of this information. I'm very excited to continue to pursue it. If you have an idea for funneling in some sort of real world information into the blockchain to affect the consensus of your SMT rewards distribution, send me a message or leave a comment below because I want to hear about it. And that brings me to the second thing I wanted to bring up today. I had another great conversation with some entrepreneurs recently who were asking me about copyright management. They're planning to do a project that incorporates um, photography and video uh, into their application and they also want to use an SMT or several SMTs to reward the people who are bringing the, the photos to the application. One of their concerns is that there could be plagiarism, that there could be copyrighted works uploaded without permission and then there would be multiple parties accepting rewards for that photograph or for that video. And the issue with that is if someone is being rewarded for the production of someone else's copyrighted work there could be potentially legal issues uh, in certain legal frameworks around the world including the United States. So 
what the solution here really is, is that there's more transparency with rewards distributions and smart media tokens. And with the rewards sharing uh, possibilities where you can have rewards come in and have a user agent or the application decide where they go up to 256 uh, uh, different beneficiaries, well now the original uh, copyright creator can actually be specified on the blockchain and rewards can go directly to them. So I don't know that there's a clear and easy solution to all the copyright rewards issues that may occur as SMTs become uh, ubiquitous and proliferate around the world. However, I do know that using a transparent cryptocurrency system allows us to address these problems in more clear and clean ways. And ultimately, we'll end up with systems where the original artwork is being rewarded and the new authors are being rewarded as well. All these questions that I'm getting are exciting me to no end. I am spending all my nights thinking about these things, and I'm very excited by the ideas that are being applied to smart media tokens. Leave your ideas below because we should be discussing these more and more. And if you have more questions, leave those below too for the next video. Thanks guys.